Alright guys, so with the modeling process out of the way, the next thing we're going to be moving on is creating the actual material for each, uh, for the car, alright? So the first thing, we're, the first material we're going to be creating before I actually get started is the car paint, alright? So before I actually get started, I want to let you guys know this is going to be a separate series on its own. I'm going to be making a completely different playlist for this, so it's going to be like uh, how to create materials for a vehicle in Blender 2.8. One, all right, because right now I'm using Blender 2.81, not 2.8. So let's get started on this. The first material we're going to create is the car paint. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split this view, we're going to need it, and I want to change the tab here to shader editor. All right, so I'm going to move into the shader editor. I'm going to press N to hide this. Let me enable this. So, I want to press N to hide that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the shader tab here. We're going to click on that. I want to add in a new one. And let's call this the car paint. All right. So car paint like that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to keep this principled shader like this. Let me just press G and I'm going to move this all the way here. All right. So what I'm going to do is let me just take this one. Okay. So I think the car paint was actually applied to a different object. Let me see what object that was. Okay, let me remove that. And let's select the door, all right? So we're going to select the door and we're going to press on the division sign to go into local view. And I'm going to load in that material, the car paint, like that. And now I'm going to load in on HDRI to actually see what I'm doing to actually show me what this looks like in real, I mean, in uh, what do you call it under AGRI lighting so I'm gonna go over to my world and I'm gonna change this to environment texture and I wanna open and add in a um an HDRI that I downloaded so I'm adding that in right now you guys might not be seeing it but I'm doing it um let me see which HDRI okay so I'm gonna use this one I just loaded in the HDRI right here alright so I'm gonna go now I'm gonna move from before I actually going to rendered view I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna go down here let me change this to cycles first and I'm gonna go down here under film I'm gonna click on film and under film I'm gonna enable transparent all right all right so what we're gonna do now let me just reduce this a little bit I'm gonna go into rendered view like this just to see what we have going on so this is the first thing we have going on and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the metallic to a full one all right so it's full metallic and I want to change it to the color I want the car paint to be, in this case, navy blue. So I want to set this to a complete blue, like this. And I want to reduce the color. I want to drop it down to something darker, quite close to blue. So before I actually continue, let me show you what I'm, the paint I'm trying to achieve here. So let me just go into the, the um, what is it, what is it, image editor. And I'm going to open an image real quick. Now we're going to be creating or recreating something like that in in the video. <clears throat> so this is the paint I'm trying to achieve. You can see right here. I'm just zooming to the side so you can see it much better. So right now we have the blue going on, all right? And you can see I've increased the roughness to 0.5. I'm going to drop it to 0.4 instead, all right? So I'm going to keep it at 0.4 and a full metallic of 1. And I'm going to take this now. I'm going to shift and D it down here like this. I'm just move this down here like this and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go in here I'm going to drop the roughness all the way to zero keep the metallic at one and I'm going to increase this to a full white all right it's not going to be blue this time it's going to be a plain white so this is going to act as our clear coat so this one right here this principal shader here is going to be our clear coat and this one here is going to be our base coat all right so the base coat is underneath the clear coat so that is what we're trying to achieve if you take a look at this image the base coat is underneath what looks like some kind of a transparent clear coat. That's why the name is clear coat, of course. So clear coat, you can actually see through it, which allows you to see the base coat underneath the clear coat. So it's sort of like a, what do you call it, a molted sort of a plastic on top of the paint. I don't know how to explain that for you guys to understand. But once we finish this, you know what I mean. So the clear coat is plain white. You just want to keep that to be plain white. And... Uh, Reduce the roughness to a complete zero. Make sure metallic is a full one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hold down Control Shift and then left click on this. That is, if you have Node Wrangler enabled in your add-ons, then you should be able to do this. So hold down Control Shift and then left click to take a look at this. You can see it's just sort of chrome. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to add in a mixed shader, 
I'm going to go into the shader section. I'm going to add in a mix shader here like this. And I'm going to set this in here. And I'm going to set this one in there. And I want to control the factor with the Fresnel node. All right. So I think Fresnel is on the, let me see, should be on the, I'm not sure. Uh, come on. Fresnel, Fresnel, Fresnel. Okay, so if you can't find it, okay, it's right here under input, all right. So under input, but anytime you're looking for a node and you can, I mean, a uh, yeah, a node, is it a node? A node and you can't find it, just click on the search here to find it. Are they called nodes? I've forgotten the name of these things. I think they're nodes, yeah. So just hover your mouse over the input and find the uh, Fresnel node over here, and just put that in here, all right. So I want to put that here. I want to set that into the factor like this and let's set this to 1.5 like that so now i'm going to hold on control shift and i want to left click on this and let's take a look at how that looks so you can see how this is looking is looking more like a carpet now just the way i wanted it to look but if you wanted to look as bright as this then you might want to be increasing the brightness a little bit better than that so just increase the brightness over here and you can see it's looking a little bit more like what we have in here because I was actually going for a navy blue color, which is what I'm going to keep it on. So it's your choice. You could even go with red, but it's the same process and all that. So you should be able to achieve it. So I'm going to keep this on navy blue, like that. And now if you take a look here in our image, I mean on our door right here, you can see the reflections in here are actually very sharp. All right, Every single reflection is really sharp. Whereas when you take a look at the uh, image we have going on here, you can see the reflections here sort of look wavy. So that is what we're going to try to achieve now in this uh, node setup. So how to do this, we're going to add in a noise texture. So go under texture and find noise. Add in a noise texture. This is it. And before we do anything else, let's press Ctrl T while the noise texture is selected. Let's press Ctrl T to add in a mapping and texture coordinate. And we're going to change this from generated to object. So we're going to drag the object into the vector like that. Now let's hold on Control shift and let's take a look at what this looks like. Nice. So right now the scale is actually too small. So we're going to increase it up to something like 300. Should be good. All right, 300 doesn't look bad. We can go with 300. So you can see why the reason why I changed this from generated is if you go with generated, you can see it's not, if you take a look down here, right here, you can see the result is not as uh, uh, proportional as the ones up here, right? So it's quite skilled in here than those on the outside. That's why we're going with object to make sure everything is equal on all sides, like that. All right, so with that done, what we're going to do now is we're going to add in a bump map, a bump map, and the vector should be, yeah. So on the vector, I want to set the factor of this into the height, like that. And I want to set this one into the clear code normal so we're going to set the node of the normal here we're going to set it into the clear coat the this uh node input of the principled bsdf the clear coat principled bsdf the normal uh input here so we're going to take a look at the whole thing and see what this looks like well first let's yeah let's take a look at what it looks like all right so you can see it's pretty much uh blurred out because we have the strength amped up way too high if you take a look down here you can see it's all the way at one so we want to drop this down let's try point one all right point one isn't bad but i think we want to go even lower let's go at point zero one actually point one is bad that's what i'm trying to say all right point zero one isn't do we still want to go down yeah let's go down i think this is too much let me come back a little bit and see how this looks let me take a look on this side see how it looks Alright, it's not bad, but I think it's too much, so I'm going to go with 0 .001. 0 .001 seems to be sharp, so let's go with 0 .004. Okay, 0 .004 looks great. I'm just dropping down a little bit more, so 0 .003. Let me go with 0 .0035. Alright, so you can see that waviness going on. If I zoom in a little bit more for you guys, you can see what I mean. Just take a closer look. Yeah, so you can see it's not that perfect, 
if I drop this down to zero, you can see what I mean. So let it load up real quick and you can see what I mean. So you can see right now the images are really, really sharp, but with the pump map enabled, you can see then they become wavy, just like what we have in the reference image here. As well, we're looking to achieve. In fact, I'm going to go with 0 0.4, 0 0.004, like that. All right. So that'll pretty much do it for the car paint. This is the node setup. You actually, let me show all of that to you guys. So I'm just going to minimize this. I want to show it to you guys. It's just two principal BSDF and a a bump map which has an input from the noise texture. Skill set to 300 and texture coordinate from the object to the vector of a map of a mapping node, which we input into the noise texture like that. And a base code could be a principal BSDF which is acting as a base code. Right, you can see this is fully rendered. You can see how that looks very nice, very very nice. All right, so that's pretty much the car paint out of the way. We have a few more stuff to go before we can actually render out the actual G-Wagon to see what our result was. So I'll pretty much see you guys in the next video.